Hello and welcome to uh, PCR TV at Euro PCR 2019. Um, we have a wrap-up session of the um, Pascal Mitral Repair System um, Symposium we just had. And um, my name is Volker Rudolph from um, the Heart and Diabetes Center in Bad Oeynhausen um, in Germany. And um, I'm pleased to be joined by two colleagues who have a vast experience in percutaneous mitral valve repair. Um, Stefan von Badeleben um, from the Johannes Gutenberg University in Mainz, Germany, and um, Jörg Hausleiter from the Ludwig Maximilian University in, in Munich, also in Germany. So um, we are uh, talking about the Pascal device, a device that um, has been CE marked in February this year, and I think a device that has been eagerly awaited by the community. So Jörg, could you summarize what are the particular features of this device, what makes this, uh, this special? Well, the Pascal device is a new device which we can use for the repair of mitral valve um, regurgitation. What is very particular about the system is that it has a central spacer. The center, the spacer um, enables that the leaflet can co up better to, to the uh, device and it also fills this whole of the regurgitant orifice. And I think what is really a major, uh, two major points that makes this system different is that you can use um, the two arms independently so they, that you can grab one leaflet first and then you can use the system to go over to the other uh, leaflet and then grasp then the second leaflet and this will allow you to optimize really a good um, um, tissue insertion into the device which will at the end um, in, um, result in a good MR reduction. And perhaps the last and, um, aspect which makes it a little bit different from other devices is that you can e um, elongate the system in those very rare cases where you have some entanglement, for example, with the cord, so that you can also get it very safely out of the mitral valve and start all over then. So this is, I think, a very important safety feature which has been uh, well, probably not that much uh, looked at in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, Stefan, based on your experience, what does this mean um, for patient selection for morphologies we might uh, choose? Optimal patient selection and leaflet therapy is always a clue to success. And uh, it is a system that works both on functional disease as well as on degenerative disease, as we have some new features. In functional disease, we reduce the leaflet stress by using a spacer in the middle, so we don't have to adapt the leaflets actually one to the other. If there is a gap, for instance, of uh, three, four millimeters, the leaflets are simply attached to the central spacer uh, which gives the sealing of the valve. We also have two different widths of the system. This means that the clasp system is smaller than the paddles which are outside. As the paddles have a width of about 10 millimeters, it is clear that the preference for the system is the A2, uh, uh, the A2P2 position, so in the middle of the valve, where the system seems to be uh, capable uh, to treat actually most pathologies, including flail, degenerative disease, prolapse, as well as severe tethering of the leaflets in functional mitral regurgitation. Mm -hmm. So, Jörg, um, we have seen data, first uh, data from studies coming from the CLASP study. Could you briefly summarize the most important results of this study for the audience? Well, the CLASP study is the CE mark trial, which which um, was used to get the CE mark in, in February, and it included patients from, from Europe and the US. Um, there were about 62 patients who were enrolled. Two thirds of those patients had a secondary MR, one third had primary MR. And what was really nice to see is that the, that the procedure was also very, very safe, as ma many other uh, mitral valve devices can be used in the mitral space. Um, so the complication rate was really exceptionally low. And then the other most important thing is that the MR reduction for both patient groups, for the primary and secondary MR group, was exceptionally good. We have an MR reduction rate at early after the procedure, but also then at six months um, with a two plus or less um, MR rate of um, above 90%. So Stefan, I mean, this is raises a very um, interesting question. Um, Jörg has mentioned it, 98% uh, patients with MR of two or less and more than 80% um, with uh, MR uh, one or less, uh, even after six months. Uh, this is 
better somehow as uh, what we than what we know maybe from other comparable studies or registries. How do you explain these results? So one of the issues is, of course, we're going and beginning experienced centers. So uh, procedural skills in the centers is important. Uh, we have to say that, of course, the individual experience with the new Pascal mitral repair system is not very high, but the overall experience in the mitral field in those centers is high. So this is one of the explanations for a good result. The second explanation is, of course, that we can specifically use these new features in optimization of the result during the procedure. So what we do is we seal the leaflet to the spacer and we see that the spacer has a unique potential uh, to reduce MR. So we, I think even more astonishing is the 86 to 81 percent rate of one plus or none uh, MR uh, being stable up to six months. I think this is a very, very good result um, that has to be proven in larger series. Uh, but this is due, I think, to the unique mechanisms. And the second one that we also experienced in our individual center experience was that the optimization by raising one clasp and optimizing, uh, putting the leaflet deep to the tip of the of the spacer actually improves the results dramatically. So in more than 60% of the cases, we actively optimize um, one side of the leaflet insertion, and this can change with the same position of the mitral repair system. It can optimize the result at least by one grade, and I think this is one of the reasons that we've seen such exceptional results that also convert in a very good KCCQ actually a quality of life improvement, which is normally um, important after five points. And here we are up to 20 points improvements, mm -hmm. which is also exceptionally high compared that we have 77 year old uh, patients here. And I think this is a huge change and we have to get rid of the situation that we only think that MR is a topic. It's also clinical output and also clinical symptoms for the patients. Mm -hmm. The other important thing is, or what was surprising also to me, is that we are able to get in the European experience now um, to those results with even only 1.2 devices. So that means that we, in, that we can really, as Stefan pointed out, use this technique with the individual, individual grasping to really get with one device the best result. If you're not happy with that, you still have the option to place a second device without having a, really a, a, some troubles with the gradients. So far we were very happy with low gradients after the procedure, but having just one device is probably a very, very good approach because it leaves you also a large uh, res um, mitral valve orifice at the end mm -hmm. um, so that the patient has a good inflow into the left ventricle. Stefan, you already alluded to it. Um, what would you expect as uh, the learning curve for the device in first in centers which already have experience with uh, mitral clip therapy and then also maybe in users that have not used uh, um, uh, such devices before? I think anybody that has used different types of left atrial mitral valve devices so far will have an extremely low uh, learning curve that is about uh, five procedures just to adapt slightly uh, to the different techniques. So maybe to conclude, um, a question addressed to both of you. Um, can you tell us um, which or what are the maybe one or two most important features that um, you know, might be an advancement over systems we have uh, so far. Maybe well, as, as, I point, or as we both pointed out, probably the independent uh, capturing of the leaflet is probably one of the big uh, differentiator to the other systems available. And that really allows you, as pointed out before, um, to really optimize the results for MR reduction, which I think will at the end uh, translate into an improved clinical outcome. I would like to add the spacer and the pedal design. The pedal design actually taking off a lot of the forces inserted with a leaflet device to the leaflet itself actually distributes this uh, pulling force um, very nicely to the leaflet. So I think uh, issues like leaflet rupture, etc., uh, we almost won't see with this device because it's specifically designed and covered uh, to overcome such problems. So this would be uh, my estimation in this regard. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you very much for this um, great discussion about, I think, an exciting field in interventional cardiology and a fast-moving field. And 
Thank you for watching and uh, have a great remainder of the Congress.